About nine years ago, 10 years ago, we started growing about nine years ago. This was a, a, a cow field. There wasn't one tree. Just cows were here for the guy I bought it from owned the property for 50 years. So like the last 50 years is just cows. And so I had no idea what to do, how to do it. And so I just started studying and learning through the School of Hard Knocks. And then if you look around, I have a thousand grafted trees. I do uh, all different types of growing here, aquaponics, uh, which uh, I'm going to teach aquaponics to you guys today. But basically, um, it's just been a trial and error thing. But I don't use chemicals. I don't use pesticides. I don't use Roundup. I don't use any of the things that most people have used or do use. Because there's a saying that says you are what you eat. Has anybody ever heard that? Okay, well, Justin, it's a half-truth. Even though I don't believe in half-truths because a half-truth is still a lie. But here's what I mean. You are what you eat. For instance, we have chickens. And uh, we have, uh, now with our new chickens, we have 400 egg-laying chickens. 400. All of our chickens, watch this. Let's say Justin had chickens. And Justin had him in his backyard and they ran around all day long and scratched and ate and stuff. And he's like, man, I got the best eggs on planet Earth. The only problem is if Justin goes down to your normal feed store or Lowe's or Home Depot or PetSmart, whatever, and bought chicken feed. And of course, because we all want to get a good deal, he would just get a big old bag of chicken feed. Well, the problem is chicken feed has genetically modified corn, genetically modified soy. Most of it has antibiotics. Some of it has hormones and all of this crazy stuff. So now he's got to feed his chickens, so he supplements his chickens with all this. So the saying, you are what you eat, has another level. It's you are what you eat that it eats. All right? Because if that chicken eats that food, that's what that egg's going to be. And this is where people don't realize it. I mean, that's simple with, like, cows. Okay? Cows were never raised in a cornfield. You've never seen a cornfield and seen a herd of cows walking through the cornfield just eating all the corn. Cows eat grass. Do you see what I'm saying? So whatever an animal is eating, that is what you're eating. Antibiotics, hormones, steroids, all of these things are really, really bad for you. Um, so you are what you eat that it eats. So now let's go one step further. We're growing uh, in the ground. I'm going to teach a, you a method uh, in just a second. Well, if you're going to grow salads or okra or tomatoes or cucumbers or whatever, it's the same principle. You are what you eat that it eats. So if there's no nutrient value in the soil, then how does it get in the tomato or the cucumber or the lettuce or whatever is in that soil? Like if you're spraying Roundup or you're using synthetic fertilizers or stuff like that, then you are what you eat that it eats. Are you guys with me? So anyways, um, I need to give a little disclaimer out. Here's my disclaimer. Um, you don't have to believe anything that I say. You don't have to do anything that I say. What I do is I tell my story of what I've learned through the School of Hard Knocks. And if you like it and you decide you want to do some of it, you can. This is not what I do for a living. I'm actually a pastor. I'm a first responder chaplain. I've been to 76 countries of the world, and that's not flying through the airports. I'm also a vet. So I've seen a lot of things. Why do I even say those things? Because I've been to many places that if I named a country, you might say, oh, that's a third world country. But when I was there, it was actually called a first world country. I'm not a doomsday person at all. I'm not a person that goes around like the, the sky's falling in. Let's move to North Carolina, live in a cave and eat lima beans. I'm not talking about anything that crazy. But what I am talking about is self-sustainability. Self-sustainability that if something were to happen or things were to go bad, then you would be able to not only survive, you'd be able to thrive. Okay. So um, you see a lot of changes happening in the world. And if nothing bad ever happens, is there a downside to growing your own healthy food? There, there's no downside to it all. So really, when's the best time to prepare for an emergency, after or before? Okay, so that's why, I, that's why we do what we do. That's why we, I started the farm. I started it off saying this. I started the farm not because I was looking for a business. 
Uh, I travel extensively. I'm about to head off to Africa for six weeks, 10 countries. So I travel extensively. So thank God we got a great team here. We predominantly a volunteer run farm for people that think the same way. And, uh, you know, that old saying, you don't give someone a fish, you teach them how to fish, you know? So that's, that's what we do here. So, um, and then the reason that this whole thing started was I, I did it just for my family. And then all of a sudden we had, you know, some great vegetables. We had chickens, we had eggs and people said, how do you do it? I said, I don't really know. I'm just kind of learning as I go, but maybe I'll show you. They said, you got to show us. So open one Saturday a month for four hours just to say, Hey, look, I'm not saying I'm the guy that you should listen to. I'm just learning as I go. And then I started opening every Saturday and uh, pretty much for the last nine years, we've been open at least every Saturday. Then I launched into grafted fruit trees. Um, when, uh, you know, what a lot of people don't realize in America is if, uh, if the trucking system stopped for one week, life as you know it would change for a very long time because everybody's in an instant fast food, got to have it now, prime, prime. If it comes in two days, that's great, but I want next day and I want those drones to drop it right on my house two hours later. So everybody's like in this instant ratification mode, but, but the problem is nobody's prepared. I mean, I don't know. I know you said Georgia, you're Maryland, but hey, come on in. But here's, here's what I'd like to say is um, unless you've been in Florida for a little while, if a hurricane comes through Florida, then as, you, as it starts getting closer, if it looks like within three or four days, it could hit. You can't buy cardboard at the store, much less food. Nobody is prepared for any type of emergency. And, uh, but, but like I said, there's no downside to self-sustainability and growing your own food. So what I'd like to do right now is, uh, and then aquaponics, as I go into aquaponics, I didn't even know aquaponics existed. What is aquaponics? I mean, I never heard of it. I mean, I didn't even know how to put a seed in the ground. I didn't even know what this thing called a grow zone chart is. I knew zero. I mean, that's how much I knew about growing. And uh, I was a first responder to Haiti. Uh, about 10 years ago, there was a massive earthquake that devastated Haiti really, really bad. And I went over there and it was terrible. But then there was an orphanage that fed 4,000 orphans on an aquaponic system on solar. I didn't even know aquaponics existed, much less to feed that many people. Now, it was a massive system, but they had protein, they had vegetables, because it uses low power, and aquaponics uses 95% less water. It was obviously once they had, once they had the proper system run, and it was, it was amazing. So... Um, uh, that's how I found out about aquaponics. Then I actually went to school for aquaponics at the same place that built the one in Haiti. Isn't that cool? So that's how I learned aquaponics. And I went to school and school was about 1200 bucks that they charged. That's not room and board or anything. So the money in this business is in the training. Now, I don't charge for training at all. I could, but I don't because I actually want to help people. Now I do sell things on, I mean, how do you pay for all this stuff? I mean, I have grafted trees. I, I sell, I've sold over 300 aquaponic systems. I, we do our own pre and probiotic immune booster drinks. We make everything. We do everything naturally. We sell chicken feed, non-GMO chicken feed that I have to get shipped in from out of state because it's almost impossible to find real stuff nowadays. Just so you know, corn and soy Within two or three years, you probably will not be able to find anywhere that's not genetically modified. I mean, right now it's hard to find, very hard to find. And so everything is changing. That's why you really need to start making some adjustments. And for anybody watching here.